Hello Zimbabwe, hello Africa, hello the entire world. Uh, let's continue with repairs. What do we have today? We have, guess, what do we have today? We have a subwoofer. We do have a subwoofer to repair. I don't know if this is an original item or it's a copy one. It's, a, it's a written life model LP-2106. This is a subwoofer. It came in as no power. Okay. So, what I love about subwoofers, they are easy to fix. What I love about subwoofers, they are so easy to fix. Because in most cases, you have like a, a linear power supply inside. And uh, I love fixing linear power supplies. Big transformer. We have the rectifier, regulator, and the output. It's very easy to fix. So our power on is plugged on, on power on. You hear the sound of the speaker. We are just having a a sound, a speaker sound here. The switch is here. We hear the 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 speaker is responding when I turn on the switch. But basically, we have nothing on the screen. I believe this kind of subwoofers, we must have some LEDs or some writing which shows that the speaker is alive. But it's just dead. It's just dead. No sign of life. No anything. Huh? So, that is the problem that we have today. That is the problem that we have today. I don't know if we can fix this, but we have to try. We have to try. So what I will do, I will take out the screws and uh, we will try to diagonalize it together. So the board is out. That's the, the inside thing of this subwoofer. So we have the AC in, like what I said, this is a linear switching power supply. This is a linear power supply. Uh, it's different from a switching power supply. On a linear, we have a big transformer. And the big transformer, we have those four diodes which are changing. Uh, AC to DC. And we do have a some capacitors, some filter capacitors. You can see those four capacitors. And here, what do you have here? We have 7.8. LM7.8 linear regulator. This one. And we have some glue things. On the heat sink, we have those... Uh, Audio I see TDA 2030A. You see these ones? So let's check some things. You can see here, it's on here. Let's check what do we have, what voltage is missing. Huh? I think we can check. What I want to check, I want to check if the transformer is outputting anything. Uh, 12 volts, must have 20 something volts on the output. Blue, blue and blue. 25 volts and the transformer is good. That's bad. I was about to say that you just change the transformer and it's where and 
the, the sub will fall come back to life. The transformer is good. We have 25 volts on the output. Exactly 25 volts. So we don't have problem with the linear transformer. What is the next step? The next step I'll go on those capacitors and check for voltage. We have 16 volts. So that means the those dials they are good. They are changing AC to DC. So what else can be fought on this board? Uh, on the output, we have this connector. I'll stick one probe on the mid. We have a linear regulator. On a linear regulator, P number one is the input, P number two, ground, and P number three is the output. So I'll stick the black probe on the middle pin and I'll check the output if we have any voltage on this uh, linear regulator. We must have 5 volts on the output. Okay, volts. On pin number 1, we have 3 volts. Exactly 3 volts on the input of the regulator. Uh, that's uh, logical speaking, if we have 3 volts on the input, obvious on the output, we can't have 5 volts there. So, something is strange here. On pin number 3, we have 2.36. Here, we must have around 5 volts. And on the input, we must have around the... We must have between 7 to 25 volts on the input. The, the, the perimeters for this regulator to work fine, on the input we must have around 7 to 25 volts. And we only have 3 volts, which is not normal. So what I'll do, I'll power off here. Let's turn it off. Let's put on dart mode. Let's check the dart, the regulator for not being shorted. And the rectifier, the end the the regulator is good. It's not shorted. So the short is not the, the problem is not on the regulator, it's on the input pin of the regulator. We have to trace where the input pin is going. Oh. The input pin which is here. I will show you the input pin. We will see that chip. That chip from that chip, the input pin is coming from that chip, and uh, so it means if we have uh, three volts, it means some, this chip is is not good. That is my conclusion, because in order that we have the input voltage which is above seven volts. Here we must have uh, like uh, seven, seven between seven to twenty-five volts. So what do we do in this case? Huh? Volts. Let's check other voltages. Here. Okay, it's AC, DC. Three volts, input, output, 2.3. 
Ó. Output 3.3. 2.34 output. Here we have a here we have sixteen volts, sixteen volts. So we have this test point with the 16 volts. So what I will do, I will bridge a wire from this point to from this point to the input of the 7805 regulator. Was here we have voltage, 16 volts. And now it's off. What we can do, let's do that simple thing. Maybe we can fix this by only a wire. Maybe we can fix this by only. A wire. So what I need now, I need just a wire. And what I'm doing, I'm just bypassing that chip. Because I believe something is wrong with that chip. Something is strange, because that chip he has to feed the regulator and the regulator must output 5 volts. So, let's do the tricks. Yeah, it's off. Let's do the tricks. Okay. And where this wire is going? Is going on the pin number one of the 7805. That's where our wire is going. That's good. Let's test for short. Volts. Let's check now. Let's power on. on. Nothing blown up. So let's check what we have on the output now. And now we have. 5.35 you can see on the screen so the regulator is now outputting 5 volts 100% sure we must have a working subwoofer why we don't have input voltage I don't know 
I don't know why. What I'm just doing now, I'm just insulating this wire with some some hot glue. Just to have proper connection there. So let me put it all together and then we come for the final test just to see if it's working or not. Now it's that time to test. I put it all together and that's the subwoofer. That's the subwoofer. Hopefully you will see. Uh, I will turn it on. On. You can see the light here. We have the blue light and the, we have some light here. Huh? You can see the writing. It's working. Huh? I can't believe we just fixed this subwoofer with a wire. Okay. So let me plug in the USB. Can you hear the sound? We don't have tweeters here. We hear the sound quality. Huh? It's working. Huh? The bass. I can't believe such small uh, subwoofer will produce such kind of bass. Huh? So it seems as if you we we've done everything. I'm sure everything must work fine here. Uh, or what I can what I can do? Let me look for for a Twitter, and then we test again. Let's test again. I found this Twitter. So let's test again. I'll power on here from the back. You can see some writing here. Pressing the standby to read the USB. And it's working. It's working. It's working. So, yeah. That was the issue. Uh, you know, sometimes it's good when you diagnose something and you come up with the results. I'm 100% sure this speaker is going to work for a long time. I won't hesitate to give warranty on such kind of jobs because if you are in this business, do whatever you can just to to solve the problem. Because at the end, if you can't solve the problem, you can't take the money. So I'm happy we managed to fix this one. The problem was there was no uh, output voltage from the linear regulator. But in most cases, you are replacing the linear regulator is faulty. But in this case, the linear regulator was not fault, but the, the input pin was coming from a chip. And I did not even look what kind of chip is that one. I just look for another power rail, which is 16 volts from the, from the rectifier, and they reroute that 16 volts to the input of the regulator. And uh, that must work fine. Nothing is eating up. Everything is cool. So, like, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for future updates. And see you on the next game. Bye.